Hello and welcome to another Facts and Dimensions tutorial video. In this video I'm going to demonstrate dynamic SQL, cursors, executing a command on a link server, using open query with dynamic SQL and using temp tables in dynamic SQL. So I'll start by copying in some code I've already written. I will be editing it a few times and the final result I'll put in the descriptions for you to copy. So I'm going to talk you through this code, starting with declare at SQL varchar max. That's a variable in which I'm going to store my SQL command. And this is the very essence of dynamic SQL. So I, will, I can build a command using if statements, case statements, and whatever else I need to create the SQL command that I want to run and then run it having created it. So the great thing is that you can use SQL to design what's going to go in this SQL command before you then run the SQL command. Um, in this particular demo, I'm going to cursor through a few tables in the catalog and get the maximum effective date. And I'm going to have to record the table schema and table name so that I can put them into this SQL command. So I've made these three variables. And notice they're all varchar max. Because this one's varchar max, it doesn't need to be in this case because there's less than 8,000 characters. But in any case, if you needed more than 8,000 characters, you'll want all the variables that you're using and mix, uh, sort of merging together to be varchar max. Otherwise, they'll get the, the finished result will get truncated to 8,000. Next, I'm just creating a temp table to store the results of my demo. Of course, you could just use a local table or anything, really. Then I'm declaring the cursor, which I've called my cursor. And you do that by declare my cursor, cursor local for, and then followed by the actual statement that has the records you want in that cursor. In this case, these five rows in that cursor. Then I open the cursor. Then I have fetch next from my cursor. So at this point, my cursor contains these five rows of data into these variables. And the way that works is it will just take whatever's in the first column in the cursor and put it into the first mentioned variable in your fetch. And then whatever's in the second column in your cursor and put that into the second variable in your fetch. So they have to match as in the number of columns and variables, and also the order that they, they appear in matters too. Now I've got a while statement here, which will keep doing this looping through this begin end until fetch status equals zero. Uh, sorry, while fetch status equals zero. So fetch status equals zero um, while it's going row to row to row. When it gets to the end, fetch status no longer equals zero, and so it ends. And what I'm running here is I'm printing to the messages box the table scheme and table name I'm working on. Then here I've created a simple SQL statement by merging this bit of text here and these two variables, which have been set by this fetch statement. So on this first run, set at SQL will equal exec azure.procreate external table script v4, followed by a single quote, followed by a and &E attendance, followed by a single quote comma, single quote, chief complaint ECDS, going here, single quote, and semicolon. And notice I keep saying single quote and highlighting two. That's because um, when creating a string, because a single quote is actually used to denote the end and the beginning and the end of the string, two single quotes together is interpreted as an actual single quote you want in the real string. The first one is like an escape for the character for the second one. And then I execute the command that is now in that at SQL. And notice I have this at the end. Now, if I had it only say exec at SQL, that would run the command locally. In this case, I want to submit that command to the Azure DB in Facts and Dimensions. So I add on at FD user DB. That sends the command to this server. Next, I'm inserting into the temp table I made up here. Select star from open query, and I've explained open query in the faster queries lesson earlier. FD user DB, that's the, that's the server. And then this is the command I'm sending to the server, which is select the table schema in single quotes, the table name in single quotes, followed by the max effective snapshot date from the table dot schema that I'm working on. If you notice there's a one at the end, that is because when you run this command, it actually returns the view that sits on top of each table, which returns only the latest uh, versions of every snapshot of data, 
and those views have the same name as the table but with a one at the end this is explained in, a, in another video so you might notice that this is underlined with a little red line that's because that won't work i'm going to just run it anyway just to talk you through that um <clears throat> the reason this won't work is because unfortunately with open query you can't build a statement to submit to it it has to be already written as in no variables no adding variables together um so you might think at this point okay let's do set at sql and put that there and then just put at sql here unfortunately um that won't work either um hopefully in a future version of sql they'll allow you to do that because that'd be very easy but don't fear i'll just undo that put it back the way it was you can still use a dynamic sql it's very easy all you have to do is put the whole statement including the insert into an open query and everything all of it in a sql state a sql variable which i'll do now open a single quote at the start close one at the end and that is the whole thing in in a command now because i've already got single quotes i'll need to make them double single quotes so that the first one escapes the second one and that becomes a single quote as i explained earlier so one there and one there and here i've had to use i already have a escape single quote followed by a single quote because that's the string that is being passed to the open query and because this whole thing is another string being passed up here i have to do it again it's a little hard to explain in the video so i'd recommend playing about with uh, strings in another query to see what i mean so that will now put all of this in this variable and then all i need to do is exec at sql so i'll now run it again okay so as you can see it's ran the whole thing it's put it in this temp table and then i've selected from temp table and that's the results thank you